the Constitution of the United States shall be violated. Feeling that, I feel that I should uphold the power of the state. I feel also that the salvation of this country depends upon returning to constitutional government. If we do not adhere strictly to the spirit of the Constitution of the United States, we shall have no chart whatever of government. We will go so far afield until we become a centralized despotism. And a despotism by judicial control is as bad on the liberty of the people as a military despotism.
I am G.B. Fulton, Democrat for the Supreme Court, a graduate of the Oklahoma University Law School, <clears throat> one of the municipal counselors of Oklahoma City, assistant attorney general of the state of Oklahoma, title attorney for the Homeowners Loan Corporation, and am now ambitious to be one of the justices of our Supreme Court. Many of you people know me, and I am confident of your support. visitor to the state capital of Oklahoma may see thousands of men working feverishly in the surrounding oil fields. Foreign oil companies staked wells in the adjacent area to drain the land of its oil. Governor E.W. Marland, realizing that the wells adjoining state land would drain the oil from state property, personally staked the first state-owned well and declared martial law over the capital area. The squad of National Guard boys called by the governor lived day and night at the well to see that there was no interference. The Oklahoma City civil authorities drew the drilling boundary near the capital so that state land was barely outside of the drilling area. The state now owns seven wells with locations staked for several others. The money received from the oil found in these wells will go into the state treasury at the rate of millions of dollars annually. The wells were drilled on the property surrounding the Capitol building and the governor's mansion. Thousands of unemployed Oklahoma men came to the Oklahoma Capitol and were put to work in the Capitol area. Ladies and gentlemen, the man who defied Oklahoma City's civil authorities and opened the state capital area to drilling, the governor of the state of Oklahoma, E.W. Marland. Oklahoma City authorities said that I could not drill these wells. But they granted foreign oil corporations permits to drill right up against our land and take our oil. In order to protect the interests of the state, Back to state land, I declared martial law and ordered out a squad of the National Guard to prevent civil authorities from interfering with our operation. The city attempted to enjoin me in the lower courts, but the Supreme Court upheld my contention. So now everything is okay. The oil is ours. Soldier boys have gone home. Millions of barrels of oil belongs to the state. Oklahoma City authorities said that I could not drill these wells, but they granted foreign oil corporations permits to drill right up against our land and take our oil. In order to protect the interests of the state, I declared martial law and ordered out a squad of National Guardsmen to prevent civil authorities from interfering with our operation. The city attempted to enjoin us in the lower courts, but the Supreme Court upheld our contention. So now, everything is okay. Soldier boys have gone home. The oil is ours. Millions of barrels of it. Oklahoma City authorities said that I could not drill these wells, but they granted foreign oil companies permits to drill right up against the state land and take the oil. In order to protect the interests of the state, protect the state land, I declared martial law and ordered out a squad of the National Guard to prevent civil authorities from interfering with our operation. The city attempted to enjoin me in the lower courts, but the Supreme Court upheld my contention. So now everything is okay. The oil is ours. Soldier boys have gone home. Millions of barrels of oil belongs to the state.
To obtain votes with false promises is worse than to obtain money with false pretenses. My platform contains but eight words. Less taxes, more trade, no trust, no war. If Europe should again drench herself in blood, we ought to keep out of those reeking slaughter pens. The last war cost 10 million lives. I was one of seven senators who opposed our entering the war. That cost me my seat in the Senate. But I tell you mothers now, as I told you then, that I will never rob your cradles to feed the dogs of war. Let's stay at home and end this tragedy of unemployment here at home. As for relief, I say down with the overhead, up with the underdog. Unlike some politicians, I'm equally interested in youth and age in the sunrise and the sunset of life. I say, give every child a chance. In the Senate, as in your business, experience counts. Can the untested talents of my opponents take the place of 19 years of experience? Why trade a true friend for a new friend? Why swap parachutes in midair? In this race, President Roosevelt is a benevolent neutral. I hold here four letters from General Farley approving my course in the Senate. If you likewise approve my course, I would appreciate your help. With your help, victory is ours. challenge to give our city the greatest period of growth in all of its history is right here on us. And I mean on you and you and you. Next Tuesday we exercise the right of a free people at the ballot box to authorize our share of the government's tremendous defense program. This bond money will be used primarily for the purchase of land on which the army will spend millions of dollars for construction and employment. The Great Air Supply Depot alone will mean $16 million in construction by the government with our city supplying only the land. Most of the other funds we are to vote next Tuesday will go for land at the present airport and the purchase of a great new airport site near Bethany. This money that we vote Tuesday will result in an annual payroll of $6 million. This means each year, new money and payrolls alone of six times the bond cost. The government will be spending thousands of dollars for every single dollar we vote. When we vote for bonds Tuesday, we are voting to increase employment and to increase business. Every citizen in every walk of life will share in the city's progress. Our city is on the march. We must go ahead. For the sake of our country and for the progress of our city, let us roll up such a majority for these bonds on next Tuesday as never before in the glorious history of Oklahoma City. I am counting on every one of you to do your part, and you will not fail, neither your city nor your country, for this defense program. <laughs> 